Two months after Mario Draghi's resignation as Prime Minister of Italy, the country will vote this Sunday for a new government. Early polls predict victory for the right-wing coalition led by Giorgia Meloni's Brothers of Italy party. A win would mark two historic firsts for Italy, its first far-right leader since World War II and the country's first female prime minister in Giorgia Meloni. So what will this mean for Italy? Welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. The coalition, which includes Matteo Salvini's Anti-Immigrant League and Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia, gained a landmark level of support, registering 49.8% of voter approval, according to a survey by the Techne Research Institute. This means the coalition could secure a two-thirds majority in parliament. That would give the group the power to push through constitutional changes, including enhancing the powers of the Prime Minister's office or direct election of the country's president. This election result could have huge consequences within Italy, but beyond its borders, too. Well, joining us now to discuss this further in Rome, Yelena Lucaselli, a member of the Italian Chamber of Deputies uh, of the Fratelli, uh, the Fratelli d'Italia, which means Brothers of Italy. In London, we have Lorenzo Codogno, visiting professor in uh, practice at the uh, LSE European Institute and former chief economist of the Italian Treasury. Also in Rome, Marta Grande, a member of the Italian Chamber of Deputies at Civic Engagement, which is a left-wing party. Good to have you all with us. Uh, so, Yelena, if I could start with you. Um, the Italian elections are on Sunday, and it does look like the right-wing coalition led by your party, the Brothers uh, of Italy are in, very much in the ascendancy. What do you put that down to? Well, uh, a lot of responsibilities because uh, this time uh, it's not uh, an easy one. And, uh, you know, we, we know that not just in Italy, but in all Europe and more in uh, all around the world. Um, so we are very serious uh, about uh, the type of politics that we want. And we have a very clear the new Italy that we want to try to have, even uh, if it's uh, not easy after eight years and ten of uh, Democrats at the government. Uh, but our idea of Italy is completely different from, from what we have uh, under our eyes right now. Marta Grande, what do you think are the main issues at stake for Italians? <laughs> Well, I think that the um, main issues that have been covered during the electoral campaign and that will be probably, uh, let's say, the great bulk of what we will be discussing over the next years uh, will be mainly the social agenda uh, of Italy and also the future of the Italian engagement in the European Union. Uh, those are the two main uh, topics uh, which have been discussed and that are very that are also interesting a lot Italians and uh, all the citizens that will go uh, to vote. So it will be, um, uh, I guess, a very interesting moment in the Italian politics from now until the next five years. Well, we mentioned at the top there um, what the uh, what the polls are showing, and we're going to put up a graphic that shows that right now. It has the uh, right wing coalition. Um, uh, leading the, the, the votes, uh, according to opinion polls, at uh, uh, over 40% there, followed quite distantly by the centre-left coalition and then uh, Five Star. Um, if I could get your take on this, Lorenzo Cardonio, um, as we look at those opinion polls, um, why do these elections matter to Itali Italians, these particular ones? <laughs> Well, of course, uh, these are very important elections because it's, uh, it's a delicate moment uh, and uh, the economy uh, could actually slow down fast over the next few quarters. Uh, so you need uh, to come up with uh, solutions uh, and policies that can actually prevent uh, or moderate uh, the slowdown that is ahead of us. All right, I want to show another graphic now that uh, shows some of what the, the right-wing coalition stands for. Um, as we say, at this point, we don't know uh, who will win the election, but the polls certainly uh, put them ahead. Uh, they are promoting what they call traditional Italian 
family values, God, family, and the fatherland. Uh, they've been more hardline on immigration policies. They favor less um, EU influence. Uh, they have proposed cutting the VAT tax on uh, essential items in energy and renegotiating Italy's EU recovery plan to account for surging prices. Uh, let me turn back to you then, Yelena. I want to ask you in particular this, what's probably the most contentious issue here is, on, is, is the, um, the coalition's stance on immigration. And specifically your party, your party leader, uh, Giorgia Maloney, who has said she favours um, the, the, the Navy acting to, to stop the um, uh, migrant boats and to turn them back. What do you say to the critics who have argued that this, that this policy uh, is, is not only legal, it puts, it puts people's lives in danger, and it doesn't actually work. Well, first of all, we don't want to use the Navy to stop the immigration. This is uh, not the right way to read our uh, proposal to uh, better uh, have regulation uh, of immigration. So what we want to do is starting uh, uh, a relationship with all those countries uh, that right now have uh, the more percentage of uh, immigrants that arrive on our uh, uh, country. And that, for us, is the only way to stop the illegal immigration, because we are not against uh, uh, the immigrants that arrive uh, on uh, our country in the right way and with the law uh, and the rights to be on, uh, on our land. The point is the illegal immigration, and every country has uh, a politic of this, and uh, Italy doesn't have it. So we want more uh, engagement from Europe, uh, for redistribution of immigration, and we want to start to talk with uh, all those countries to have uh, a better uh, feeling about what type of immigrant arrive on uh, our country. So all right. that's very well, different. Let's just, of, uh, let's just put. Let's just, the Navy stop. Let's let's just pick up on that. What what, what is your definition of the the type of immigrant? Uh, that that uh, uh, Italians uh, should welcome. And what, what's what's your, your your coalition talks about promoting the traditional Italian family? What what exactly does that mean? No, we we don't want a traditional. These are two different uh, topics. Uh, the traditional family is that we wanna improve uh, our families uh, to have. Uh, a child, which is something that we don't have right now in Italy, and to have a government that helps family to grow in the right way. And this is one thing. The immigration is another topic, and what we want is give the ability to those people that can arrive in a legal way on our country to be on our country, to work on our country, and to just uh, uh, be part of uh, the Italian culture. But uh, we have right now a lot of illegals, people that arrive here because they want to probably work, but right now, Italy cannot give work to Italians. So we need to be clear about who can be on our country and our land and can work legally in our industries and who cannot be here because is doesn't have the right to be here. So we know that a lot of people are running from war and we are very... Um, happy to have those people on our country and help them. But that's different from what is happening right now. Marta Grande, I want to get your response to some of that. And uh, we show the, the, the opinion polls there uh, that show your, your centre-left coalition uh, trailing quite far behind. Um, so is your... It does look at this point that the, 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 what, the ideas that you're putting forward to the Italian people are not if these polls are to be believed, are not resonating with enough voters. Why, why is that? 
Well, um, let's say that our coalition is uh, trying to, um, let's say, uh, keep on working on the path. We've been working over the years, um, at least um, from the beginning of this legislature, which had uh, gone through basically pandemics and also a war. Uh, we want to address uh, all the future problems, keeping on working, on um, the recovery plan and the recovery uh, European instruments uh, we try to, uh, to build all together with the European Union um, by also uh, keeping our um, path, uh, our European path very clear and without questioning pretty much anything now, uh, but actually trying to find solutions to the problem we are facing. Uh, it seems to us that um, it will be um, probably complicated uh, uh, in the future. I mean, there will be uh, complicated years ahead. Uh, but at the same time, we want to uh, deliver policies of inclusion, of um, um, help towards people that have less. Lorenzo Cardogna, we've seen this rise of, 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 of far-right political parties across Europe. What parallels do you draw uh, between what we've seen there and Italy? And how, how, how did Italy get to this point? And if we look at the history of Italy over the past 20, 30 years, uh, effectively there's been a, an attempt to try to find stability on the one end, but also uh, at the rise of protest movements, protest votes. Uh, this is not just an Italian phenomenon, it's a global phenomenon. Um, I think Italy has tried with... Uh, uh, the League, which initially was uh, indeed a protest movement, and then we got uh, the Five Star Movement. Uh, and, uh, you know, so there are ups and downs every time uh, uh, Italian voters seem to try a different uh, uh, party to, to see whether that works. Uh, and fortunately, so far, we haven't really had any kind of uh, major turn uh, in terms of economic growth and in terms of policies. So, again, Italian voters keep trying. And this time, the center right is the beneficiary of the uh, discontent, so to speak. And the electoral system uh, is such that uh, uh, the center right, given that it is united uh, compared to a fragmented center left, uh, will uh, probably win a disproportionate number of uh, seats uh, uh, in both houses. And then, therefore, there might be a chance for them to govern for a full political term. Uh Yelena Lucaselli, your, your leader, uh, Giorgio uh, Meloni, has in, in the past expressed admiration for uh, Hungary's nationalist leader, Viktor Orban, uh, and um, has also opposed gay rights um, and talked about more hardline policies towards uh, migrants. Um, how, what do you say to, to those people who are concerned about this and are not convinced by the argument that's coming from them that that uh, that uh, your party is is not fascist that it has not that it's shaken off the, uh, the its fascist past. Well, this is uh, the fascist uh, argue is something that we had heard uh, a lot in this campaign, uh, but uh, doesn't uh, express who we are. Um, I came from a different politic um, uh, history, and uh, I stay very well in Fratelli d'Italia, and uh, my husband and my kids are Jewish, so there's no way to uh, talk about us as a fascist. And so this is the first point. Um, about Orban, you know, uh, he's in Europe. And he represents a part of Europe that we should keep more near if we want uh, still going uh, around the world and represent uh, democracy and uh, liberty, which is something that right now is under attack from uh, Russia. So I don't really think that compare us uh, with Orban uh, it's uh, something that uh, help uh, the uh, the story of Fratelli d'Italia and uh, doesn't represent what we want to do in our politics inside and outside Italy. Uh, there's a fact we cannot push those countries uh, in uh, outside Europe 
and against the democracy and liberty. So we need to keep those uh, countries uh, near and have us on our side, inside the NATO and in uh, the Atlantic uh, uh, contract. So that's uh, uh, what we want to do, and we are pretty clear about that. Marta Grande, where do you see Italy's place within the European Union, and, and what, what is the choice here uh, on that issue as, as Italians go to the polls? What is the choice as you see it? Well, I don't see any choice other than being in the European Union. We've been uh, one of the funding uh, states. Uh, we need to stick with the rest of the European Union, try to keep um, and working with all the other countries in order to have common strategies, uh, exactly uh, as we have done over the past months uh, regarding the Russian aggression. So that was a perfect example of how you can do uh, foreign policies all together. I mean, really in, the, in a time where uh, we needed to have a common strategy, somehow, even without having a formal uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, let's say, uh, we still managed to find a common solution. And so I guess that's the, that's the way. Um, our countries alone won't go anywhere. And especially in this specific time where we have um, an economic crisis, food crisis everywhere in the world, uh, we have to stick together and uh, just uh, keep being committed to the European Union we all created. All right, we're going to play a, a clip now from Enrico Letta, the head of the PD Democratic Party. Uh, in Italy. If the right-wingers were to win the political elections in Italy, which we are trying to prevent with all our might, the first to congratulate them would be Putin, the second Trump, and the third Orban. Yelena Lucaselli, what do you say to that? Well, that uh, is uh, not the right way to approach uh, for the politics in general because it represents an Italy that uh, is not what we want, first of all. And um, that is really what keeps in, uh, in, in a bad position our de democracy. You know, Italians need to vote, and uh, they have to be free to vote who they like. And uh, we don't want to change anything about uh, our democracy. We don't want to change Europe. We don't want to go outside Europe. Um, so I really think the only things that we want is to have a more um, a good society, a more equal society, we want to work for our industries to be more competitive inside and outside uh, our country. And uh, what we want to do is put Italy in the future, actually in the right way. Because uh, until now, these were only great words, but nobody in the left side transformed those words in reality. Now we need really to change our country and to lead how Italy can. Uh, Lorenzo Cardogno, it's worth remembering that Italian governments generally don't have uh, a long life. Uh, certainly over the last 30 years, the average government has lasted some 20 months. So I, I want to ask you, if, if the right-wing coalition wins here, uh, in Italy. What are the prospects uh, for it? How long do you, do, do you think they will last? That's a very good question. Uh, certainly, the, if you look at the history of uh, the past uh, few electoral terms, uh, and there have been many changes in uh, governments, uh, because uh, governments tend not to last for long. Um, this time it might be different because, uh, first of all, the central right is probably going to win a sizable majority in both houses. Um, secondly, power is a very important uh, glue to keep together these forces that uh, share some values but uh, have different agenda. Um, and so it might work. Eh? I think I see, I see some risk anyway, because uh, if you look at the program, at least uh, the one of uh, Fratelli d'Italia and uh, the League, 
um, uh, they have differences uh, that uh, sometimes are difficult to reconcile. Uh, so we'll see whether they will manage to kind of find uh, some form of agreement. Also, keep in mind that there are possibilities that uh, Italy might face difficulties uh, to get towards Europe. Uh, uh, these two parties, Brothers of Italy, sides with the law and justice uh, uh, in Poland, and is a bit sidelined uh, in the European Parliament, uh, while the League uh, is uh, together with Orban, and they are not in the mainstream uh, two political alliances uh, in the European Party. So effectively, uh, if you end up with uh, some major projects at European level or major votes, as it happened last week uh, regarding Hungary, uh, there could be some embarrassment, at least, uh, on the side of Italy. Uh, so I think uh, the foreign policy might be a very crucial area for the new government uh, uh, and for the cohesion of the new government going forward. Uh, Marta Grande, what, what, what do you see as, as Italy's foreign policy going forward, uh, then, with these elections coming up? Well, that's actually the, the great question we are all asking ourselves. I mean, what will happen regarding uh, foreign relations? Um, there are mainly two options. One, that um, our country will keep on having the same policies we've always had, which is something that typically happened over the years. Uh, but there's also another option um, that it might be completely different. And um, I mean, what we are now facing in Italy, the, cry, the energetic crisis, uh, was basically, is still basic due to uh, Berlusconi's foreign policy. And so his decision to develop much more his relations with Russia instead of working on um, green energy. So now, years later, we are paying uh, this price. So um, foreign policy is very much at the basis of our lives. Uh, but sometimes we don't consider that. Uh, that's why um, we are all wondering what will happen. Uh, hopefully, it won't be very much different from what we are seeing over, over the, the past years. Uh, but we really don't know what might happen in the sense that from one side, we have, uh, let's say, uh, programs that seems being uh, very much uh, against the status quo or at least they want to change it, that's what we heard over the years. But now it seems they're very much Euro-Atlantic, so uh, we'll see what will happen. Uh, from my point of view, I believe that, again, as I was saying earlier, uh, we have to stick with what we've built over the years. So that's Yelena, my, my hope for tomorrow. Elena you, you were shaking your head to some of that earlier. Tell us why. Well, first of all, because uh, Letta was uh, one of the uh, most uh, close uh, Russian friends about energy when he was president. Um, second of all, because uh, the relationship with uh, Russia was uh, increased from Europe, not just from Italy. And that uh, uh, gave the sense of the, uh, how much failed the European uh, um, way to think uh, at Europe which is uh, different from what we want. So we want more autonomy inside our country and we want a Europe more strong uh, outside and more focused on what we can do without uh, Russian. Uh, so that's not something that you can put in relationship with Berlusconi because uh, the government after made a lot worse the situation. And that is why we are where we are right now. Uh, Lorenzo, there is a, a school of thought that says once, once a, a political party or coalition is in power, they tend to uh, uh, embrace a more conventional line when it comes to the reality of government. Do you think, do you expect the same to happen here? <laughs> Well, that is uh, certainly the story of 2018, when uh, the two forces, the uh, Five Star Movement and, uh, and the League, came together. And uh, with the populist agenda and uh, anti-establishment agenda, they immediately faced the reality of, uh, of, a dif of a situation that cannot uh, really allow for kind of uh, 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 maverick uh, policy. So effectively, they 
gradually became more mainstream. I think uh, today the situation is a bit difficult, different. I think uh, uh, Salvini and the League have changed some uh, uh, stances uh, on various issues, so they have become a little bit more moderate. Um, on the side of Brothers of Italy, we have seen uh, very reassuring messages. We will see whether these messages are confirmed with policies. Uh, but it's, there seems to be certainly less desire to, so to speak, rock the boat, because that would be very risky for a country like Italy with very high debt to GDP and, uh, and an economy that in the past hasn't really grown that much. All right, we're out of time. It'll be interesting to see how that does play out with those uh, elections in Italy on Sunday. Thanks very much for being with us. Yelena Lucaselli, Lorenzo Cardogno, and Marta Grande. Thanks very much for being on Roundtable. Thank you. And remember, you can see more discussion and debate on our YouTube channel. Just search for Roundtable TRT World. But for now, from me and all of the team here, goodbye and thanks for watching.